Hello fellow nerds, this is Nikki from the Media Division and today we are talking about the new GH5 firmware. I'm going to do a little quick test. I just got it today, installed it right on it and for me there is two major features in here which are interesting and that's the 4 to 3 anamorphic or we call it open gate where you really use every pixel on the GH5 sensor and I'm interested in the new 400 megabit uh, all intra codec. So, if you're interested, stick around, let's go. So, first of all, I would like to look at the 4 to 3 mode. That is very interesting for me. Um, some call it the open gate mode, so every pixel on the sensor is actually used. And um, 4 to 3 uh, uses more uh, space of the sensor than the 16 to 9 modes would. So it, it should have some quality advantage and it's recorded with a 200 megabit H.265 so that should be a very very good quality and um, if you want to know how that looks at least on YouTube you can see it right now this is actually recorded with that and you might say like well this is not 4 to 3 this is 16 to 9. Yes it is it is uh, shot with an anamorphic adapter it's the SLR Magic um, 1.33 and it's attached to the Panasonic 12 to 35. You have to go to um, about 30 to 35 to not have cropping while on open gate. If you are on the 16 in the normal anamorphic modes or on a normal 16 to 9 mode, um, you can use it up till what, 20. So you get way more cropping in open gate just for those who um, use anamorphic adapters. For those who don't use anamorphic adapters um, there's a lot of tutorials about that and why you would use it and for example you get the classic horizontal flares which is not very pronounced on this very small light um, and uh, 1.33 as you can see actually produces a 16 to 9 picture but has the anamorphic characteristic. Not as strong as a 2x would, but uh, more convenient to use. One very bad thing about the software update, or at least I haven't found it yet, maybe I'm just too stupid to find it, or Panasonic hit it very well, there's no de-squeeze modes in the cam. So when you want to see what you're actually shooting in a de-squeeze way, so in a normal aspect like it would in the end, so 16 to 9, you can't. Um, it is always a squeezed picture. And if you want to actually monitor what you're doing, you will have to use a little something like this, like the Shogun Inferno or any other monitor that have a feature built in to de-squeeze the picture. In this case, if you use a 1.33 anamorphic adapter, you should have a 1.33 de-squeeze. Shogun has that, it has a 1.5 and a 2x as well. The second subject I want to look into very quickly is the 400 megabit uh, codec. Everybody is waiting for it and I would like to uh, talk a little about what an all intra is versus a long gob. Most people assume that 400 megabit will have a vastly greater image quality than a long gob has and that is not really true. It is just another way of compressing footage which means uh, in a long gob there's a group of pictures and um, the codec predicts how pixels are moving from one to the next frame and can save a lot of room there. Uh, an all intra only compresses within a frame so it doesn't do it. So it needs way more space, way more bandwidth to just keep the same quality that the long gob has. So general image quality between the 400 megabit and the 150 megabit long gob will be around the same actually. Now if you move the camera a lot or you have a subject that moves a lot or you have rain um, uh, or waves or fire, something, a, a pattern that changes a lot, uh, here you can have the case that long gob breaks up. For example I shot this dolphin video, I will post it right here and as you can see there is a lot of water movement going on there. There's spray, there's um, waves, and um, this is where the long gob really has problems. Um, it will break up and have bad artifacts. This is where the um, all intro will shine, 
And not only that, um, the all intra is easier on the NLE, so your computer uh, has less trouble using it. But it will use way more space. So it's, it's a bit of a trade-off situation, whatever you want. Just all pro codecs that I know of are um, all intra and uh, because they're more secure to use. You have, if you lose a frame, for example, if your card is not fast enough, you will lose one frame. In case of a long op, you will lose a whole group of pictures. So this is why all intra codecs are considered safer, which they are, and are mainly used in professional productions. For example, ProRes HQ, ProRes, the whole family, uh, or the Avid codecs are all, all intro. So, uh, let's look into the cards. Um, of course, you need a V60 or a V90, a quick card to, to get 400 megabits a second on the card and to do this reliable. I will not go in testing for uh, V60 or V90 uh, cards, of course not. They will work, that's pretty safe. Uh, but how about the slower ones? Um, what will work, what will not work? So we are testing the Lexa 265 gigabyte with a 1000X, that's 150 megabyte per second maximum uh, read speed. Now let's see how much the sustained um, write speed is. Don't worry, I'm not gonna torture you with this too much. Uh, we will uh, speed that up a little bit. So in the meantime, uh, I can tell you something about the 400 megabits. Uh, I um, edited this all in uh, Premiere Pro, the latest version. And uh, remember this? Yeah, it's actually shot with the 400 megabit codec. I know this is not the best demo. We will come up with something better in the future. But for this quick purpose, I uh, shot the same thing at the same simultaneously on a um, Atomus Shogun in ProRes HQ. So put these side by side and you can be the judge if uh, the 400 megabit or intro of the GH5 internal can hold up. From my point of view, I have to say it is indistinguishable even off before the uh, YouTube upload. The Anamorphic 423 H265 is not readable by um, Premiere, so you have to transcode to ProRes. I used Edit Ready for it, and after the import of the ProRes, you have to right click and go on Modify, Interpret Footage, and there you can see there's a uh, quick pixel aspect ratio. You conform it to the 1.33 to get a discrete image, and you're done. Altogether, the performance of the 400 Mbit is about the same of the ProRes, um, not quite as lovely. So now we're up to almost 40 minutes and after 40 minutes I thought like that's enough. If it wrote for 40 minutes it will write forever. There's no faults yet. And see if the card generated much heat uh, or how is she doing in general. The card is barely noticeable warm and um, so I guess it's a good one. So that is it for today. Um, Panasonic please add D-Squeeze for the uh, monitor. That would be very nice and we need 2x, we need 1.5x, we need 1.33x. That's the usual stuff that the people actually use. And um, yes, I would say you can use the Lexa X1000 cards. I know Lexa has been um, sold, so you might pick that up now. They are about $200 for 265 gigabyte, and I will post a link to that in the description. And if you like this, I would like you to subscribe and to like it and give me your comments. And um, if you were wondering all the time what this video is displaying in the back, this is an ad I made recently for Rebel. That's um, a reseller for fashion articles like uh, Gucci Chanel and all those stuff. And uh, this is running on German TV, not actually that footage. Uh, it's a 13 second spot. And uh, in my next episode, I want to make a making off of that spot. You will have a look at the set and I will describe the whole process of uh, producing that spot from the beginning over the, the production and um, this was actually shot on a Red Dragon because we needed 4K in 120 frames per second. 
and um, we will uh, I go up to how to code it actually for uh, national television. If you find that interesting, please subscribe uh, and I will keep you up to date. See you around until next time, the Media Division. Bye.